I want to accomplish so much more, 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 more. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I want to, you know, I want to have my health. I want to keep enjoying meals, going out into nature, doing really cool gigs, and, you know, making new friends and relationships along the way. Yeah, I'm just trying to make the most of, of it all. Oh my God. Oh my Wait, God. Dad. I'm gonna throw up. Oh right, 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 right here. No, I don't think I can. My new movie is called You Hurt My Feelings. And uh, it's written and directed by the wonderful Nicole Hall of Center. And I play Beth, who is a writer who has had some success. She's written a memoir. She's happily married. She's been married for 25 years. She has a young adult son. And she's written a second book. And um, she goes to her husband for uh, input. And he has been telling her the whole time how much he loves the book. He thinks it's amazing, et cetera, et cetera. Only for her to discover that, in fact, she overhears him speaking, saying that he doesn't like the book at all. It's not his cup of tea. He thinks it's terrible. And he doesn't know what to do or how to tell her. We'll go sneak up on him. Can you say anything? No, I can't. It feels too late. And so this causes quite the rupture in their relationship and their marriage. And there's a quite a, a very big ripple effect after this sort of cataclysmic emotional moment in her life. This movie is so much about human relationships and the minutia of human relationships and human behavior. And it really gets into the weeds of the connections between people, and that's where I live. I love to explore that as an actor, both comedically and dramatically, um, and it's kind of my happy place. I have been in a long and happy and marriage, and I'm a creative person, as is my husband, so I could very much relate to the idea of the, the notion that my partner wouldn't be telling me the truth about my work, it sort of cuts to the core of who I am because my work is very much me, or so I think, and or so Beth thinks. It almost feels like an infidelity, to tell you the truth. I wanted to work with Nicole again for a number of reasons. First and foremost, she's a very good friend, and she's a very good friend who happens to be an absolutely excellent, uh, superior writer-director and her voice is very specific um, and there's not, a, she, she has, there's no voice like hers. She um, has a completely authentic and unusual and human uh, take on life and comedy and drama and she threads the needle of both comedy and drama in her writing which is something that also very much appeals to me. I think it's important to tell these stories because they're entertaining, right, first and foremost. I mean, we let's not kid ourselves. We're here to entertain audiences. Um, but I also think it can be, um, it, it can encourage a thoughtfulness about relationships. It can start, it can be sort of a conversation starter of sorts. And um, uh, I don't know, I just think it's good for the, possibly, hopefully good for the culture to have movies that are about real true things and maybe even small, and the idea that this sort of seemingly small event is actually a huge event and, and the conversation around that and what's truth and what is not truth and when is it right to tell the truth, when it is not to tell the truth. You know, these are questions you could talk about forever, I think. Hi, it's me, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and guess what? I've got a new podcast. It's coming out April 11th and it's called Wiser Than Me. I started the podcast because I saw a documentary on HBO called Jane Fonda in Five Acts. I was completely blown away by the scope of her life, the variety of her life, and the meaning of her life. Um, and Jane Fonda is 85 years old. And as I was watching it, I was thinking, God, you know, we just don't hear from older women. You know, we don't do a deep dive very often into the lives of older women. And they've lived, they have all this experience under their belt. And why aren't we hearing from them? I wish there could be a podcast in which I, we, we could hear from older women. And then I thought, oh, 
well, maybe I'll do the podcast. <laughs> I'll do the podcast I want to hear. And that's really sort of what happened. The idea is that older women, in my view, are very much uh, uh, made invisible in, in our culture, in Western culture, for sure. And I think that the experience and the wisdom of older women is, a, is an untapped natural resource that we have at our fingertips, but we're not using it, right? So I thought it would be exciting to, you know, compile a list of women, see if anybody wanted to sit down and have a pretty frank, honest conversation about life. I try to approach these conversations as conversations as opposed to interviews. Um, having said that though, it's a lot of work and it's a different part of the brain uh, because I feel to a certain extent, you know, we have a lens through which we're approaching this conversation, which is tell us what you know, give us wisdom um, if you can, even if, you know, from the most minor to the most major, right? Um, and so, I, I, I'm, I'm approaching the conversations that way. And of course, there's a lot of research and prep that goes into it. And each woman is so accomplished and has done so much with um, her life that it does require, you know, I, I don't want to blow it. I, I want to I come to uh, the table with a lot of their information and history at my fingertips, only because it just, it, it allows us to delve a little deeper. I think that these women are at a point in their lives where they're just gonna tell the truth. I mean, what, what are they, I mean, they're just gonna, they're, it, there's no more, um, there's less bull There's truly an honesty and a kind of a depth of conversation as a result. You know, and I think these women are really happy to impart what they know. I think they're happy to tell, you know, and we'd be fools not to listen. If I called Jill from prison, you think that would make up for the other ones? Sure. Because you only get one call. The prison call is like the king of calls. I think that would be a very nice gesture. The ending of that show was so sad because we all loved each other so much. There was definitely a grief period when the show ended that was real and felt, but I do very much remember wanting and thinking that I needed to, you know, keep working. I wanted to keep working. Um, I wanted to keep doing um, this thing called acting. Yeah, I wanted to keep pursuing it, which I, I've been able to do, which is great. I think that as I've gotten older, I've definitely become, I think I'm a little more relaxed about uh, uh, um, concerns about uh, beauty and stuff like that. I think I'm a little more relaxed about it, she says, in full hair and makeup in front of a camera crew. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie, it's hard to age in, in front of camera, you know, it's, it is. And um, I, I, because it's like right there in your face, you know? And, and uh, but I'm also very happy to be here. You know, consider the alternative. No, thank you, you know? I wanna keep working and uh, I wanna keep working with vitality and energy. And so far I have it, so I'm gonna use it. Mm -hmm.